Okay guys, so when Tudor came out with the Tudor BlackBerry Pro um, early last year, I was like, hmm, that is a cool looking watch. But yeah, some people say that it is a bit too thick, yeah, because of you know, the way that the movement is made. And I was thinking, right, that is a cool watch. It's too expensive and I'm not going to be able be able to buy it right now. But what if, what if St. Martin makes something similar or an homage of it? And a few months later, to be spe to be to be spe specifically correct, it's on August they release this thing, right? So and immediately I've got my hands on one and reviewed it, and yeah, there are so many comments that I received on that particular video. And a few months later, uh, let, let me maybe one or two months later, Seiko came out with their version of the GMT movement, which is the NH thirty four. Right, is that maybe is that correct? Yeah, NH34. And I was thinking, hmm, what if St. Martin produced this watch by using the Seiko NH34 movement? And that is what they did. And we have this SN0054B version, right? So I've been wearing this for a month, and what do I think of it? Let's find out and cue the intro. Assalamualaikum and hello YouTube. So welcome back to the full review of this San Martin SN 0054B dash. I think there's no dash here, <laughs> right? So anyways, this is this SN 0054 that is using a Seiko NH34 GMT movement, which has been released somewhere around um, end of October or early uh, November 2022. And yep, I've been wearing it for about a uh, month and a half now. And what do I think of it, right? So this one, let's just you know quickly go through the dimension first. So let's just <laughs> let me go through my notes right now um, the case is 39 millimeters in diameter and but the bezel is protruding a bit and that makes it a 40 millimeters bezel right so and I'm gonna be calling it a 40 millimeters diameter watch and the thickness is just 12.8 millimeters making it a whole lot thinner compared to the watch that it tries to be the to the black bay Pro, which is I think 14.6 or 0.9 I can't remember but a little electrolyte of 48.6 from here to here and we, it came with a um, 20 millimeters lug width right so and of course as you guys may have already know I also own the previous version of this particular watch which is using the um, Hangzhou 6460 movement a GMT movement made in China which is a clone of the ATA 20 is it 29 something or is it yeah 29 something something I can't remember but this one is using the Seiko NH34 movement right so of course um size for my wrist the bracelet is basically the same on this part in these two watches so if you are going for this particular watch with the bracelet um for my 6.75 inches it will be it will be weighing at about 140 grams which is you know what are still very much usable if you guys have um you know small wrists like mine right so how do these two compare and do i do which one do i prefer the hangzhou movement or the seiko nh34 movement to be completely honest with you guys i <laughs> i'm not really a, a I, I don't travel that much these days right so after the pandemic when the fun after the pandemic starts i've got myself a a you know a day jobs and and that makes me that's make it very difficult for me to travel and yeah honestly i don't really use the gmt functionality of any watch for that matter but having a gmt gmt watch is really you know a bonus to me because i really do love seeing that that you know orange colored <laughs> fourth hand because it looks cool right so it just looks cool anyway so let's just go through more details of this particular watch right so the case is made from stainless steel uh, 316 l stainless steel and finish in brush on the top of the bezel with this uh, printing in black color and we have a polished section at the side of the bezel which is of course not you can't really turn it because this is a fixed bezel and at the side we have a brush finished um case with you know i can can we say that this is a satin brush because it looks so refined and at the edge of this lug you can see that there is a polished chamfer 
uh, running from the mid of the case until the end of the lux and i think of course saint martin produces one of the best finishing of any watch uh, i i think i say any watch because yeah i've handled a few and i think saint martin still uh, one of the best if not the best right so anyway um uh, we have this stamp Ooh, maybe laser edge crown we will see later when we do some macro shots and yeah it is it has that saint martin hex logo here and again that hex logo is available on the dial as well but this time around it is a printed logo similar to the pre the original version and we have a hex saint martin hex logo and on the class as well so that is good because saint martin is as you guys know may have may have known they are you know notorious <laughs> of doing this um, you know un inconsistent branding on their watches right so that is that's good in my opinion right so anyway we go to the dial here we have this matte black dial which for me is good because this is a tool wash by at the end of the day and we have that for me this you know um <coughs> t or tudor style snowflake hands is a great um, design choice in my opinion of course they could always go for the mercedes hands and be done with it but i think this one is much much more interesting to look at but that's just my own personal opinion right so the gmt writing is in yellow and at, at the bottom at, at the six o'clock and we have automatic with a hundred meters of water res resistance written in white which the color tone is basically almost the same as the um the indices which is Base, which is actually a BGW9 Super Luminova and the same uh, loom is also applied on the pencils, pencil mini hands and the our our hands and also on this GMT hands right so and the second hand as well right so I, I just love seeing those snowflake <laughs> on these three hands I you know I just I just love looking at them right so on this particular NH34 powered version it is you it has this date at the three o'clock right so at but on the Hangzhou version right so you can have this in both the date or the no date version right so that of course when this thing came out so some of you asked hey why is a gmt why does a gmt you know i they don't really like the design without the date but for me yeah i can go either way and i just i'm not really uh, too fast about that right so anyways let's just go to the case back which you know <laughs> nothing to see here and yeah that's I, I don't know guys so i just think that san martin might have should have been giving us something else other than just a simple plain case back right so uh, let's just go through, quickly go through the bracelet so an old style bracelet tapering from 20 millimeters to 16 millimeters which is my favorite setup and the class is using this um, multiple multi finished uh, brush on the top and polish on this chamfer with my four micro adjust right so scissor class is this is your typical very high quality uh, bracelet from saint martin and i just you know i just love these bracelets but of course i put it on this um, rubber strap which is i think from julong on aliexpress and i think it looks much much more tool like and yeah i think this is the way to go for me at least and yeah what do you guys think you know what let's just quickly go to the macro shot let's just see if i can do this in one go yep let's just see what is closer okay right okay let's just wipe that fingerprint off the dial oh i totally forgot to mention that we have a dome sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating and you can see the printing that is done on this uh, watch on this saint martin sn004 is nicely done there's no uh, smearing there's no you know an unfinished printing which is cool and we have that um polish uh, hands minute hands second hands and also the uh, polish hour hands which is i don't think any there's any fluff or dust inside there which is very nicely done and you can see that um, black printing is applied at the end of each hands which makes it looks like it is flowing when it is moving and the hour hand sorry the gmt hand is printed in yellow a quite a dark yellow i must say almost it looks like almost orange but yeah i think this is a nice color tone because it does you know it really really pops when you uh, when you put it when it's put 
when you put it when you compare it to the rest of the watch which look, which look a bit mundane in my opinion right so the printing uh, like i mentioned just now is really, really crisp there's no smearing there's no smudges which is good and of course uh, printing on the bezel which is engraved and you know infused is it, is it the correct word uh, well they, they just uh, put in the enamel printing at the at the at this grooves and i think that is done really well as well as and you can see that the brush finishing on the case is really nicely done and there's no i can't really feel any sharp edges here right you can see there so that is very nice and the engraving i think this is using a laser engraving correct me if i'm wrong there and it is nicely done as well and you can see that the grip here is enough for daily use right so that is the uh, macro shot and let's take it at let's just you know it is already 10 20 pm tonight so i'm just going to show you how uh what is uh, how the seiko n 34 movement looks or performs on this particular watch right so first position you can change the gmt hands so i think i don't know you know what, let's just get out from the danger zone first <laughs> right so i'm gonna i really i'm really afraid i'm gonna kill this watch <laughs> when doing this video right so let's just to go to the 10 10 position right so let's just see you. the first position right so when you unscrew the crown which is very very nice you can always hand wind the the, the watch because it is a seiko movement by the way and first position and you turn it clockwise you can adjust the gmt hands which moves in the clockwise all right in the clockwise in clockwise direction but and you rotate the um, minute sorry let's just move it over here but in when you rotate the crown anti-clockwise you will change the date right so yeah that is cool in my opinion you know what let's just put it at uh, anyways right so and of course when you take it to the next position you will hack the movement right so that is cool but if you compare it to the hangzhou 6460 movement and again this one is just take it out of the danger zone is it i have no idea whether this is night or or day i'm mean, I, I, I don't know right so anyway um the first position of course if you turn it uh clockwise you will move the you will change the date wheel right which is not um, available here but if you turn to the anti-clockwise it the move the gmt hand will move backwards or anti-clockwise which is <laughs> totally different setup compared to the seiko nh34 movement right so and out this the auto position will hack the movement right so of course this uh hangzhou 6460 beats at 28,000 uh, beats per hour right so while the seiko nh34 movement beats at 21,600 beats per hour but to be completely honest with you guys you know what let's just compare the second hands on these two um can you really see the difference between these two yes i if you re take a look really closely do you, you will see that the uh, this the the hands are move the second hands on this on the left one it's smooth you know it has that you know smooth sailing movement but on the seiko it's not really that bad guys so yeah and considering that there is a gap of 50 us dollars between these two you can all you can always get this under 300 us dollars and you can always get this for about 250 us dollars i don't know guys it's really hard to pick the hangzhou now that this option is available available but yeah still if you really want that you know that <laughs> smooth sailing sweeping second hand yeah you have to go for the hangzhou because yeah the movement the seiko movement will not be as smooth as that right so anyways let's just check the loom right so check oh i've totally forgot to put it on my wrist and see how it looks like so let's just show it to you guys or should we do the strap change later all right so anyway let's just let's just put it and yeah this is how it looks on my skin is 6.75 inch wrist so still very very much variable for a 40 millimeters diameter watch and let's just quickly charge the loom because that is what you guys want to see right so on the left we have that c3 old radium super super luminova but on the right we have this 
blue BGW9 uh, Super Luminova. Are you guys ready? 3, 2, 1. And boom. And both performs really, really well in the dark. Right. So if I am to choose between the two, I can't because I love them both. But <laughs> of course, it really depends on what is your preference. And San Martin never skimp on their Loom application. And, and of course, they need to because the, their price is quite high for an AliExpress watch, right? So let's just quickly put this put this on something else or some other strap that I have prepared here. So I put it on this, you know, um, Yulong FKM rubber strap. Let's just quickly put it to a leather strap, right? So I've prepared some here and let's just put it here. This is a Epsom, Epsom leather from san martin right so uh, i've uh, i've selected the brown 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 color one and i think it would look awesome in my opinion right uh -huh. okay quick release not quick put <laughs> quick attach right so quick release or quick attach but you do have to bear in mind though so the gap between this um case and the strap is a bit too close and sometimes depending on what strap that you are using the it might hurt your the end of your strap right so this is how it looks on a an epsom leather strap from san martin i will of course leave a link down below to these two watches and also the straps that i use on this particular video if you guys wanted to get uh, one for yourself right so i think that looks cool what do you guys think and let's go to another strap all right guys so this is how the watch looks on a nato strap so i've choose this um ribs rib nato from san martin as well right so you can see that this is a two-piece construction that will not add that much of thickness to the watch because this watch is already a thin watch to begin with but of course if you, if you are using this strap on the real thing the to the black bay pro it that thing will become a much much taller watch um you know so anyway let's just put it on the wrist and see how it looks like let's just see if i can do this from behind the camera because sometimes it is quite difficult guys so let's just put it on yeah like so and boom we are good to go right so somehow this this setup and this <laughs> that yellow um gmt hands looks nice com uh, when compared with this green color strap and i think it looks cool what do you guys think right so there you have it guys this is my full review of and of course a bit of comparison between the two watches this set these two sn0054 an homage or a clomage whatever you want to call it um of the to the black bay pro so yep four thousand dollars versus 350 and sorry it's 300 dollars and 250 dollars you know what i'm gonna save up i'm still gonna save up for a tutor but for the night for the time being yeah this will this will you know <laughs> this will do this will do right so anyway please give me a please do if you if you guys have, have anything to ask about this particular watch or, or if you want to get uh, this watch for yourself do please do use my affiliate links in the video description below because it, it really helps me um to you know to go ahead and buy more watches for to for me to review for you guys right so if you guys like this video please give me a big thumbs up and if you want to see more future video reviews such as this one please go ahead and subscribe to my channel until next time i'll see you soon stay safe and bye bye